We're the Marblehead Magicians. And you're watching High School Game Day. And you're watching High School Game Day. On Boston 25! Woo! All right, the energy was high. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week eight of our high school football coverage. Tom Lydon with you, and I got to tell you, I think I might have the magic touch. More often than not, when I'm here on a Friday night for Butch, something special happens on the football field. That was the case again tonight. A fierce battle in the Northeastern Conference. Undefeated Danvers hosting Marblehead. The Magicians lost for the first time this season last week, so a lot on the line. And oh, by the way, the Falcons, 6-0 coming in, hadn't beaten Marblehead in the regular season since 2005. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was the playoff win in 2015. That was pretty huge. But no regular season wins since 05. This one turned out to be an instant classic. So sit back, relax, and be sure to share this video with your friends when we're all said and done here. You're probably going to want to. Marblehead entering this game without Sean McCarthy. Declan Rudolph, two captains out with injury. Danvers. Fired up on senior night to get this thing going. They get the ball first tonight. They convert a bunch of third downs. And then Rich Canova caps off a 65-yard drive with this nine-yard touchdown run. It was seven-zip Falcons halfway through the first quarter. It stayed that way into the second. Danvers knocking on the door again. Canova going to get the call once more. This time from three yards out. That made it 13 nothing. but guess what? PAT no good. So we're going to keep it at 13. Back and forth they went. Time winding down to the half. Marblehead moving. Pitch goes to Ryan Freiberger. The ball comes loose just before his knee hits the ground. It's recovered by Ezra Lombardi, and here come the Falcons. Now, Lombardi's also the quarterback. He's got a pretty easy job right here. Just hand it to Canova and get out of the way. He gets on the board for the third time in the game, a four-yard touchdown. It's 19 nothing. All right, so you want to try to get that missed PAT back. This is how you do it. That's a nifty little move by Lombardi there. Into the end zone for the big guy. Andrew Cronus, and it's 21-0. Canova had 87 yards rushing in the first half. They had the ball for 16 minutes. Marblehead has just over a minute to do something, and they do. Driving down the field, getting on the board before the break. Josh Robertson to Freiburger. That's a nice catch and run. Magicians are in business. This is Will Twadell from two yards out, and we've got ourselves a 21-7 game at halftime. Second half, different story. Marblehead gets the ball. They score in just six plays. Robertson, 19 yards to A.J. Russo. He keeps the feed in. My buddy Nate Burleson calls that toe drag swag. And it's suddenly a seven-point game. But Canova's a man possessed on senior night. For the fourth time, into the end zone. And just like that, we are back to a two-touchdown game. Hello, Canova. Man, what a night. Three plays later, though, after the kickoff, Marblehead strikes back. It's going to be Robertson, and you're going to like this play because he's dialing up the deep one. On the other end is Twadell. Woo, good pass, good catch, little wave. 60-yard eh, connection for six. Robertson up and over 200 yards passing after that one, 28-21. Marblehead trying to muster some magic. Sometimes defense helps. Lombardi throws it up, picked off by Max Podger. Ooh, the momentum is shifting. The comeback complete early in the fourth quarter. Tim Cronin takes it around right end from eight yards out. The extra point is good, and we are tied 28-28. Both teams battled. Final minute of the game here. Marblehead on the move. Third down. Robertson is sacked by Tom Wallfield, the captain, making a huge contribution on this monumental night. So fourth down. Marblehead punting, or at least lining up to punt. And oh, no, the snap goes high. Nothing you can do but chase it down and just do your best. Time winding down. Danvers in business inside the 15-yard line. First, we're going to get a run from who else? Canova inside the 10-yard line, and you can feel the tension. Can't you just feel it? Ultimately, Max Leet is set up for the game winner from 25 yards out, less than five seconds to go. No pressure, kid. The kick is up, and it's wide right. But wait. The dreaded penalty, roughing the kicker. So they get another shot from the 20, a 20 yard field goal, no time on the clock. Make it and you walk off a winner. Max Leet, you, my friend, are a legend. Danvers wins it 31 28 with no time on the clock. They improved to 7 0, and our great intern, Catherine Ellis, caught up with the last second redemption hero right after the game. How'd that feel? It felt really good. It felt I'm not okay. gonna lie, it felt really good. What was the pressure like in that moment? Well, I felt it was it was a lot since like I looked back and I saw my whole town. 
saw everything, saw my brothers here on leave before before deployment. Kind of meant a lot just seeing everyone behind me. It was what like, was it like getting a second chance? Monumental. <laughs> I mean, I got lucky with that, but kind of put it all together, all the hard work my team does every day. I watched them grind. They're a bunch of grinders. They're ready for the state title. They're ready to go. Honestly, words can't even do it justice. I mean, they've had our number the past few years. They're a great team, but to get a win like this, it's pretty special. Um, it feels like we really have just, just gotten over a hump. We claimed the NEC title, beat Marblehead. It's, it feels great. How does that title feel specifically? Um, it, it feels really good. We've worked really, really hard all year, and um, it feels like it really paid off. I think um, we all just trust each other and love each other so much that like, in tough times in the game, we never fold or we never like um, turn on each other. We just go in and... Um, we just support each other and have encouraging words for each other. So. You know, I think fundamentally the kids never gave up and they played hard and they played for each other and, and geez, that was that was one heck of a game. But uh, really just proud of the effort and the persistence and, and the character the kids showed in the game. I mean, that was a great win versus a great team and you got to really tip your cap to Marblehead, the coaches and kids with their injuries coming in and playing the way, way they did. Fantastic finish for the Falcons. Tough way to lose for the Magicians. Senior night of success for the home team in Danvers. Now they got to beat Gloucester, who's winless coming into tonight. They play on Thanksgiving. They clinched their first outright title since 2013. Fantastic season for Coach Ryan Nolan and his guys who got it done tonight in dramatic fashion. Thanks to everyone in Danvers for their hospitality. Our photographer, of course, Jeff Robinson, doing a great job as always. Our intern, Catherine Ellis. Jem McQuillan back here in Dedham, keeping everything straight for us. We're gearing up for the playoffs, folks. Looking forward to it. Butch is going to be back next week. We'll keep it rolling here on Boston 25 as we bring you a high school game day, game of the week, every week until the champions are crowned at Gillette Stadium. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.